Hello everyone and welcome to yet another awesome shader graph tutorial. The winner of last month's poll in my Patreon was Elden Ring's Ground Magma visual effect. The cool thing about this is that you can use it to create all sorts of ground effects, like I have done here. It even has alpha clipping for creating electricity and other cool stuff. If you want all these project files including these three awesome examples I have here, please consider becoming a Patreon. Without any further ado, let's get right into it. Here we are in a brand new project. All I really have is a scene and my URP settings. We will begin by creating a new lit shader graph and call it whatever you want. I will name it ground effects shader. For the lava effect, we will need a noise texture. So I will import this texture into my project. The download link will be in the description down below. It is grayscale so that we can color it using shader magic. Now double click it to open it and right click then select maximize so we have more space to work. Ok, up here we need a texture 2D to reference the noise texture and we are naming it with a 1 inside a parenthesis. This will make more sense in a minute. Add a vector 2 called noise speed and noise scale then a color called noise color. For the noise texture we will select the noise we just imported into our project. Noise speed, we will set it to 0.5 on the X axis. Noise scale to 1 on both X and Y. Color mode, set it to be HDR and pick whatever you want it. I will go for a yellowish. Now holding control, select every single one of them and press D to duplicate them. And voila, you can see the 1 is changed to 2. Cool, this is so we have more detail in our shader by moving not one but two noises at the same time inside the shader. So press space to look up nodes, I will be using this method throughout the video. Find sample texture 2D and connect our noise one here. Add a tiling and offset node, connect it to the UV of the sample texture 2D. For this tiling value we will give it the noise scale 1. For the offset we have to multiply the time with our noise speed 1. All right. For the UV location of our noise, we need to first get the world position and split it so that we can grab only the red and blue channels. Now, if you see it here, it is working as intended, but it does not have a color, so simply multiply this with our noise color one and then add another multiply node and connect it to the base color. Cool, holding control, select the multiply node sample to the texture, tiling and offset, and this other multiply node. Then press D to duplicate them. Move them down a bit. Now we have to replace everything but this, right? So this one is noise speed 1, swap it for noise speed 2, then do the same for scale, texture, and color. Lastly, connect it to the last multiply node like this. I'm going to change the noise scale too a bit so you can see more of the detail we are adding by having two noises with different values combined. Let's see how it looks in game. Save it, then back in my scene I will add a sphere game object at the center of the map and flatten it out because this is a ground effect after all, right? So right click your shader and create a new material. I will name it material to keep things simple then drag it into our sphere game object we just created. Here it is. It's working alright, but the values are not quite there. Noise scale 1 I will set to 0.2. Speed to 0.05 on the y axis, then um, noise speed to 0.4 on the y axis. Okay, that actually looks pretty good. Let's actually make it even slower. Okay, yeah, that's better. Let's go back to shader graph so we can add more control over the lightning as well as the alpha clipping. Up here, add a new color called emission color. For its color, I will choose a yellow then change its mode to HDR. Add a new multiply node then connect our emission color to it and the output of this multiply to the emission. If increase the emission color's intensity, it will brighten up and that is what we want. Let's add more control over how this shader reacts to light in your scenes. 
create a float called smoothness, then plug it here and do the same for metallic, ambient occlusion and alpha clip. Create a new float called alpha, then connect it to a power node, then plug this like so. Save the asset and go back to our scene to play around with it a bit more. I'm going to lower the emission a little bit so it is better to see. Now if you increase the alpha clip you will be able to see through it. This is very good if you want some transparent effects like electricity or like a grid of some sort. You can play around with the alpha clip and alpha to get the best results. I will leave them at 0 and 1 for now. Let's head back to shader graph. Box select all our nodes, then right click to turn this into a group selection which I will name color. Alright, let's do the vertex movement. Let me expand this real quick so we have more space. We will need to add three new floats, vertex strength, vertex vertical strength and vertex scale. Then add a vector 2 called vertex speed. Add a position node on object space, a time node so that we can multiply time using the vertex speed, then add them like this. I will use a gradient noise for this but you can use pretty much any type of noise you want to. Drag the vertex scale and plug it here. I will set the vertex scale default to 10 for now. Multiply this noise with the vertex strength so that we can control how much we want the vertices to move. Multiply this yet again, this time with a normal vector node set to world space. Now we add the position of the object and we're pretty much done. This is a ground effect though, so I want to have more control over how high and low the vertices move. Split this and add a vector 3 then plug in the x and z values. For the y value we will multiply it using the vertex vertical strength. Lastly plug it into the position and we're done. I'm just going to box select this and turn it into a grab selection called Vertex. Right, uh, hit save and let's head back into our scene. Let it compile and the first thing you will notice is that it is completely flat and that is because I flattened it out earlier, remember? So up here in the transform values, simply reset the Y value scale to 1. Go down to the material values and increase vertex vertical strength to 1. If you set the vertex strength to 0 you will see our sphere again. So I will set both of these to 0.2. For the vertex speed I will do something very low like 0.2 or 1 rather. The vertices are moving a lot and since this sphere does not have that many it looks a bit off. Simply lower the vertex scale and you will see it move more smoothly. I'm going to leave it at 3 for now. Maybe even increase the vertical strength a bit. Yeah, okay. Now we're talking. Go mess around with these values, change the color or noise texture, I don't know, go crazy. These are some of the ones I have done for my patrons. If you are interested in more content like this, please do like and subscribe. This is a very small channel. So every bit helps out a lot. Thank you very much and I will see you in the next video.